Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. This is a video series where we go over the new features available in ES6. Today's episode will be a little bit different. I want to go over how we can use ES6 in the browser today. Uh, support is getting really great for ES6. Uh, current Chrome, so Chrome 50 I believe it is, uh, has about 91% support for the new ES6 features. However, we can't always bet that we're going to be working, uh, or sorry, our code is going to be running inside of Chrome, uh, the latest version. You might be running uh, slightly older versions of IE, uh, Firefox, um, other browsers like Dolphin or uh, Opera, something like that. So if you're doing uh, writing code that's going to be run on all those browsers and you want to use ES6 now, you have to make sure that our code compiles from ES6 to uh, browser-friendly ES5. Hopefully one day soon we won't have to do this, but uh, just for now we're gonna have to make sure our code is readable everywhere. So in order to do this, we're gonna need to use uh, Gulp and Babel. Now Gulp is not the only thing we can use to transpile, and we don't have to use Gulp and Babel together exclusively. Uh, Babel is a transpiler uh, that has been created to make it really easy uh, to transfer our code from ES6 to ES5. Now, uh, in order to do this, we're going to need Node installed, and we're going to need to be working on the command line. Now, if you haven't used a lot of command line tools before, uh, I want to point out one website that's pretty great, and uh, it's commandlinepoweruser.com. Uh, if you haven't heard of Westboss before, uh, now you have, and you'll probably be way better for it. Um, but it's a great website, it has about 11 videos, I think, uh, and it kind of gets you up and running with using the terminal uh, really quite quickly, and it's really a really nice uh, video series. So if you haven't uh, used a lot of the command line, definitely check out commandlinepoweruser.com. So in order to use uh, Gulp and Babel, what we first have to do is make sure that we have Gulp installed globally. So uh, I already have it, so I won't run it, but you would have to run npm install dash g, not dash f, oops, if I could type, Gulp. So Gulp will be running, uh, or will be available globally to us on our system. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you have, and I'll have my Sublime text over here, a uh, folder structure, something like this where we have, uh, you won't have the node modules yet. Uh, I'll explain why I kept those here. But we'll have what we'll call a build folder, where we'll have uh, our JS script that actually gets compiled. And we'll have our source folder. And this will be where we actually write our ES6 code. You also want to make sure that you have a gulp file.js. And this is where we're going to write our gulp script. Now, I have this package.json file that I've created in advance uh, that I use to install all of our uh, packages that I'm going to use. Uh, that's what this node modules folder is here. Um, but I want to show you how you can step through making this uh, yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, delete this. And let's just do it ourselves. So in order to create your own package.json file, I'm just going to close that. Don't save. You need to do uh, a couple things. So uh, npm init will initialize the npm uh, package.json utility. And then it's going to ask us a bunch of questions. So what is the name of our project? Uh, Gulp and Babel. Uh, what is the version we want? Version 1. And then what is the description? Uh, you could actually put stuff you want here. Uh, it could be testing Gulp and Babel. Realistically, we don't have to put anything there. Entry point, uh, for us, we can just leave it at gulp for now, but this would be like the main file for your project. Test commands, nope, git repository. Keywords, if you were actually putting this uh, on NPM as a module, you want to make sure you put keywords and stuff here. And author, we can just put ourselves. And license, we'll just leave as uh, ISC for now, um, but you'd probably want to make it something uh, more specific to your project. So you just type yes. Oops, I spelled it incorrectly, but apparently it doesn't care. So I'm just going to clear my screen. It's created this uh, package.json file for us. And what this does is it's a way for us to manage our dependencies. You'll see there's these two sections here, dependencies and dev dependencies. And when we install packages through NPM, we can save them to this file so that when we actually uh, share and collaborate with this project, we don't have to give somebody our node modules folder that has all the modules in it. We simply give them the package.json file and they will be able to run something like npm install and go from there. Uh, npm install will install anything that's in the dependencies and dev dependencies section. 
Uh, I'm just going to go back to the package.json I had uh, so that I don't have to download, so that we don't have to sit and wait for this video to finish. Um, but in order to get what we need going, uh, once you've done npm init, you'll have to type npm install dash dash save. So this will save it as a dependency. Um, dash dev, save it as a dev dependency. We have to include gulp. We're also going to have to include gulp babel. So gulp dash babel. Oops, type it in the wrong place. Gulp dash babel. And then uh, with the newest version of Babel, Babel uh, 6, instead of just by default uh, transpiling ES6 code or ECMAScript 2015 code, we actually have to download a special preset. So um, we're going to say Babel dash preset. Oops. Uh, if I could spell and type ES2015. Now, note that we have a space between all of these. If we do this, like this, uh, that will go ahead and grab all of those um, packages uh, in one line instead of doing npm install save gulp, npm install save gulp babel, uh, npm install gulp, et cetera, et cetera. So cool, once you've done that, hit enter. Uh, it'll go out and it'll install all of your features. Uh, if you ever see when you're installing through NPM, it says something like e access as the error, you might just have to put sudo at the top uh, of your command. So sudo at the very front up here. Um, just based on the way you've installed uh, node, it's uh, in a privileged folder. So you have to run it as uh, the sudo user. So again, I'm not going to do this because I've already installed them and I don't want to sit here waiting in the video, but I'll give you a second. There you go. And hopefully you've got them. Obviously, you can take all the time you want. So I'm just going to clear that off and we can get started. So once you have those packages, uh, they'll show up in your uh, package.json. You can actually see that I, uh, I did this incorrectly. They're all in the, except for Gulp, but they're in the dependency section, but that's okay for now. So. I want you to open up gulpfile.js, and I'll just close that. Oh, I did want to save that. Whoops. That's OK. I have a test copy in another window. Boom, there we go. OK, so open up gulpfile.js. So in order to use gulp, uh, we need to require gulp. If you've ever written a node script, once you've installed uh, something through NPM and it's gone into the node modules, you need to require it into your uh, script.js file or gulp file.js. So uh, the great thing about Node, and especially if you've installed Node now, and you're on something like Node uh, 5 or 4, uh, is that there's actually a lot of great ES6 support. So we can actually write our gulp file that is going to transpile our ES6 code to ES5 code in ES6, which is really quite nice. So what we can do is we can say const, and we're using const here because we to say gulp. Uh, gulp is never going to change. We never want to reassign uh, the value stored in this variable. So we're just going to say const gulp equals require gulp. Great. And oops, semicolon there. And the next line, we're going to want to require babel. So const babel equals require oops, gulp dash babel. Now, we're using the Gulp version of Babel. Uh, it's just set up to specially work through uh, Gulp. There's actually just a standalone version of Babel. And if you have a grunt, there's probably a grunt dash Babel, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to be using our Gulp Babel. And we save it as just Babel just because it's easier to type. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. Cool. So the way that Gulp works is you set up all these little tasks to run. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a JS task first. So what we do is we say gulp.task. And task is a method that takes uh, a couple arguments. In this case, the first one is going to be the name of our task. So we'll call it uh, maybe ES6. And the second argument in this case is going to be the function that's going to run when this task is run. Now, since we're using node uh, 5, we can actually do some ES6 stuff. So we can actually use an arrow function here as a callback function, which looks pretty sweet. So inside of this uh, body, we need to actually say what we want to do when our ES6 task runs. So in this case, we're going to return gulp 
dot source. So what source do we want it to look at? In our case, it's going to be our SRC file or a folder slash app.js. So the app.js file inside of the source folder is sort of going to be the uh, uncompiled, untranspiled code. The way that Gulp works is we take a source and then we pipe it through some other function. So uh, on a new line, uh, as long as you don't put a semicolon at the end here, we can say dot pipe. And inside of pipe, we actually tell it what function to pipe our uh, app.js file through. In our case, we want to pipe our app.js file. So this is the file that has the ES6 code on it through Babel. So we say Babel. That's a function like that. And the one key thing here uh, is that we actually have to pass an object inside of Babel. I'll just space it out like that. And this object actually allows us to configure Babel. If you remember earlier, I was saying that in Babel 6, you had to uh, install presets for transpiling ES6 code. Uh, it doesn't do it by default anymore. So we have to say presets. And then we say ES2015. So there's a lot of different presets. If you're ever doing React, there's a, a Babel React preset. Um, all kinds of things out there. Then on a new line, we can say pipe. So it's run through Babel. Now we want to pipe it out to gulp.dest, so destination. And we just want to put it into that build folder. And there we go. So now we have our uh, ES6 task written and we're ready. And there's one more task I want to add. So in gulp, if we have a task named default, that will allow us to simply just write gulp in the terminal. Currently right now, if we want to run this, we'd have to do gulp ES6, the name of our, oops, the name of our task. But I just want to do gulp as our sort of kicking off point. So just a really quick little function, we'll say gulp dot task, so another task. In this case, we'll call it default. And we'll use our arrow function as the callback again. Oops, I always do that. And uh, inside of this, instead of running uh, a gulp dot source, what we do is we say gulp dot watch. So we can actually make this watch specific files. So we want to watch the source file app.js for any time it changes, and we want it to run our JS, or actually, sorry, our ES6 uh, task. And this is great. So what's going to happen is anytime a save or change of the file happens to app.js, this task will run and it will output our, uh, um, so the word I'm looking for here, our compiled, transpiled code into this build app.js file. So let's save this. And let's go to our terminal. And if everything's set up correctly, we should be able to type gulp. And hopefully it's good to go. Cool. And you should see something like this. So it just tells you what file you're using and what tasks it started. Uh, I actually want to point something else out. Um, I'll just kill it. So command C, or sorry, control C will kill uh, any running watching gulp file. Inside of our default task here, uh, if we were running this code and we wanted to run the ES6 code uh, right when we started this up, we could also put as a first or a, sorry, a, a second argument here, uh, an array that has the name of uh, the tasks that we want to run when we start up gulp. So if we put ES6 there, save that and run gulp again, you can see that it'll run ES6 and then it'll start up the default. And then now it's waiting for us to make changes to our JS file. So let's make some changes. So inside of the source file, uh, app.js, let's say, uh, well, let's do something simple. Let's say uh, let um, name equal Ryan. Actually, we could do something like this, right? Ryan. And we could say let add equal, and we'll do an arrow function, a, oops, sorry, a comma b, and let's just have it return a plus B. Cool. If you save that, you'll see in your terminal that it has started and finished the ES6 command. So uh, gulp.watch was watching for anything changing inside of this file. 
And now if you actually take a look at the build app.js file, you'll see that it has taken our code, our ES6 code, and transpiled it down into be ES5 code. So it's removed the arrow function. Uh, and anywhere where we said let, it actually just changed that to be a var. So uh, let's actually look at like a slightly more extreme example. Inside of our app.js, let's use uh, rest parameters uh, and some arrow functions and stuff like that. So let's make maybe a uh, let sum equal. Uh, maybe this is a function that will take any number of variables. So we'll do rest parameter dot 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 numbers, and it will return oops, uh, numbers dot reduce. Oops, if I could type. And what we'll do is we'll get the previous and the current. And I'll just make this smaller so we can fit it all in. Actually, we'll just do the braces so we can see it all. And we'll just return uh, prev plus current. Cool. Great. So if we save this again, you'll see that it'll run the code. And if we go back to build, you can see that it actually creates uh, quite a more complex function. We get the ability of using this nice, nice, uh, let's say syntactic sugar, although it's not quite the meaning of that, uh, but it is a nice, sweet looking uh, syntax. And this is what it'll actually do until we can use it in the browser today. Um, so that's pretty great. Uh, and if you actually look at this, you could actually work out what's going on. It's just making its own um, uh, numbers uh, array and then doing the, the, the reduce on top of that. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, and that's it for today. So hopefully you learned a little bit about using Gulp and Babel. Um, again, there's probably tons and tons and tons and tons of tutorials out there on how to do, uh, how to do this. Uh, I just wanted to show you really quickly uh, since we've been talking about using Babel with JS bin, I wanted to make sure that everyone had an understanding of how you could use it in the real world. And again, if you're using Node, you could actually go ahead and use quite a few ES6 features today. Uh, lots of stuff like arrow functions already ready to go, let and const, uh, template literals, uh, the spread operator I believe is in there, not rest parameters unfortunately, um, just so many things. So yeah, I hope you learned something. Uh, on next episode, we're going to look at promises. So we're going to take a look at uh, the new promise uh, constructor inside of ES6, uh, how we can use them and how we can uh, maybe if you haven't used promises before, maybe we'll just briefly talk about what a promise is and uh, all that stuff. So uh, hopefully you've had a good time uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye.